Welcome to the uh, Saturday morning session um, and introduce our first speaker. Um, Matthew Egan is a full stack dev and he's here to talk to you about describing descriptors. Uh, we will have questions at the end of the talk, so just hold anything from there. Thank you, Matthew. Hi all, my name is Matt Egan and today I'm going to be talking to you about descriptors. So before we get started, you already know my name. Uh, I work at DiviPay, which is a company here in Sydney and we're focusing on virtual cards and an expense management platform. Um, so if you want to find me online, all my links are up on the slides and they will be up there at the end. So before we get started, I'd like to say thanks to a few people. Uh, so I'd like to thank Adam and Chris for technical review and Daniel and Russell for speaker curation. So who's this talk for? So I'm aiming this talk today at anyone who's comfortable with classes in Python. However, I won't be going as deep as meta classes in this talk, but there are some features that you could use meta classes with. So why do I want to give a talk about descriptors? Well, I believe that descriptors are quite a hidden feature of Python. And while they are covered in the official documentation, they tend not to be covered in other video resources and tutorials. Also, as an application developer, I didn't know about descriptors until recently, um, and I have found that they, are they tend to be used by a lot of library developers. So throughout this talk, I will be using Python 3.6, as Python 2 is now end of life. Um, if there's any backwards incompatibility issues, I will try to raise them during the talk. So to outline this talk, today I'm going to be presenting to you a problem, some solutions to this problem, and a better solution, which is going to use descriptors and why I think that's better. So before we get started, I'd like to cover a quick class. So here we have a person class, and you can see that it's got its initialization method with one attribute, which is name. Below, we can create a person, which is going to be called Matt, and we can access this name attribute using p.name. Here, this is just going to print Matt. We can also reassign to these kind of attributes uh, just by assigning to it. So here, we're going to assign Sam. And again, we can access it and see that the values change to Sam. So now that we're comfortable with our class, we'd like to look at it a bit more. So this is a person. And a person has a name. And we'd like our names to be capitalized. At the moment, we can, always, we can pass in anything we want as the name. And it's just going to stay as it is. So as you saw in that last example, we passed in Matt with lowercase m, and it stayed lowercase. And we want it to be capitalized. So to demonstrate this, on our left here, we have our current person class, which has Matt lowercase m. And when we access it, we get Matt with a lowercase. But this is our ideal uh, scenario. We want to pass in Matt lowercase m, get Matt with a capital. Then when we reassign to Sam, we want to get Sam with a capital as well. So the first solution that I'm going to present is the setAtra method. So setAtra is built into Python and allows us to customize the storage of different attributes on a class. So this is going to get called whenever we try to set an instance variable. And it's going to take the instance object itself, the attribute name that we're trying to set, and then the value we're trying to set for this attribute. So to solve our problem using setAtra, you can see that we're declaring it on our person class. Then we're checking whether or not the attribute is indeed the name attribute. And if it is, we're going to capitalize the value and call the super method. Otherwise, we're just going to call the regular super method and let the class do whatever it does. So this solves our problem. We can pass in mat with lowercase m. This is then going to call setAtra with the attribute name being name itself and the value being mat in lowercase. It's going to recognize that this is the name attribute and capitalize the value before setting it on the instance attribute itself. So then when we access this variable with p.name, we get Matt with a capital M. The same process happens when we try to reassign to Sam. It's going to try to call setAtra with the attribute being name and the value being lowercase Sam, capitalize the value and store it. So then when we access it, we get Sam with a capital S. So this solution works, and it does the job. However, it is locked to this class. If we want to take this functionality to other classes, if we want to, yep. Thanks. 
if we want to take this functionality to other classes that aren't subclasses of this person class, we'd need to copy our code or somehow refactor it. Our next solution is using the at property and at name setter uh, decorators. So here, we're uh, creating a property called name. So this is going to be our getter method, and you can see that it's returning self dot underscore name. We also have a setter method here, which is the same name. Um, and then it's going to take in the value, capitalize it, and store it on underscore name. Do note that we are actually storing this on underscore name, not name, because otherwise we'd have name clashing. So it is important to note that property is actually implemented as a descriptor. Uh, however, it is an abstraction um, that doesn't provide everything that a descriptor could. So this is also a method that is going to solve our problem. So we can pass in mat. This is then going to call our setter method when it tries to set self.name. This is going to capitalize the value and store it. And then when we access it using p.name, it's just going to return that value that's stored on underscore name, which in this case is mat with a capital M. And then the same process follows when we try to reassign to Sam. So again, this is a perfectly valid solution. It does the job. However, it is still locked to this class. And you can imagine that if we had a number of different attributes that we wanted to customize, the class source code would get quite long and verbose. So what if we could just do this? So what if we could just declare that name is always a capitalized value? Furthermore, what if we could declare that we have two capitalized values without having to make the source code quite long? So this is all possible using the descriptor uh, protocol in Python. And it ultimately leads to simpler class code. And because descriptors are implemented as classes, they're reusable. And this is going to uh, basically wrap up all your logic and lead to greater maintainability. So the descriptor protocol is exposed by Python as a way to customize the storage and retrieval of instance attributes. As I said before, they are implemented as classes, which means that they're self-contained and reusable. So to implement a descriptor, there's uh, four different methods that we can implement. So we can implement the get method, which is for customizing the retrieval of instance attributes, set method for the storage, delete for deletion, and as of Python 3.6, the set name method. So set name is an interesting one because it's only called on class creation rather than instance creation. All the others get called whenever you try to set, delete, or get from some instance attribute. And if you wanted to replicate set names functionality in versions prior to 3.6, you'd either need to use meta classes or pass in the name when you initialize the descriptor, although that could have some human error. So if we look at all the public GitHub repositories to see uh, how often these kind of methods are implemented, we can see that get is implemented about 1.2 million times, set is implemented about 600,000 times, delete's about 100,000 times, and set name, although minuscule on this chart, is actually implemented about 2,000 times. Uh, that's not surprising because, as I said before, it's only been available since 3.6. Um, while these numbers don't really mean too much, you can imagine that the proportions are quite similar in closed source software. So our first descriptor method is the get method. Um, so the get method takes in the descriptor object itself, the instance that we're uh, operating on, and the owning class. So if we were implementing our capitalized value descriptor, which I'll show you shortly, uh, for a person, uh, you can see that the self here, this is going to be the capitalized value descriptor itself. The instance is going to be our instance of the person class. And the owner is going to be the person class itself. Our next method is the set method. So this is going to get called whenever you try to set an instance attribute. So it takes in the descriptor itself. It takes in the instance that we're operating on. And it also takes in the value that we're trying to set. So do note that this doesn't actually require us to pass in the name of the attribute that we're trying to set, as the descriptor doesn't really care about that. Our third method is the delete method. This is going to be called whenever we try to delete an instance attribute. So it only takes in the descriptor object and the instance that we're operating on. And our final method is set name, and it's going to take in the descriptor object itself, the owning class, which in this case was going to be the person class, and it's going to take in the name of the attribute that we're trying to set. 
No, this doesn't take in the instance argument because it's only called on class creation. So if we had our person class and then we had 100 instances of persons, this would only get called once. So there are two types of descriptors that are covered in the Python documentation and we have the data descriptor and non-data descriptors. So data descriptors are any object in Python that implement the set method, the delete method or either and non-data descriptors are any descriptor that doesn't implement set or delete. So essentially they only implement get. So descriptors aren't all created equal, they do follow a descriptive precedence. So when you try to access an attribute in Python, it goes through a lookup process. Uh, this lookup process is a little bit more detailed than this, but this is the section that we care about today. So you can see that the first thing that it looks at is, is this attribute a data descriptor? If it is a data descriptor, then it's going to call the corresponding method for whatever you're trying to do, be it accessing, retrieving, deleting. If it's not a data descriptor, then it's going to check, is this in the instances dictionary? If it is in the instances dictionary, it'll return it or change the value for whatever you're trying to do. If it's not in the dictionary and it is a non-data descriptor, then it'll call the non-data descriptor for you. So the rest of this talk is going to be about data descriptors. However, I do want to uh, cover non-data descriptors quite quickly. Uh, so a lot of things that you do in Python with a lot of different libraries, they occasionally seem to be magic. Descriptors are the magic, right? So you might be familiar with static method and class method and maybe ABC abstract method and the functools partial method. These are all possibly, uh, sorry, these can all be re-implemented in pure Python as non-data descriptors. So that's implementing the get method and changing around the arguments to achieve whatever their purpose is. So moving on from that, this will all be about data descriptors now. So the first thing that we're going to do is cover the weak key dictionary. So when we implement a descriptor, it's going to look after all the values for some attribute for some class, not for some instance. So again, if we had our person class and we had 100 different person instances, we would only have one descriptor instance, which is going to look after all the values for one particular attribute on that person. In our case, it's going to be the name attribute. So because of this, we need somewhere to store these values. This is usually stored on the instances dictionary itself or somewhere else. Um, however, for the purpose of this talk, I'm going to cover the weak key dictionary because it does lead to simpler code and it'll be easier to understand. So the weak key dictionary is provided in the standard library from the weak ref module. And it essentially behaves like a regular dictionary. However, when the reference to the key is gone, it deletes the entire entry from the dictionary. So you can see that we have our person class uh, and then we're going to create a dictionary called data and then when we access data.data, you can see on the right hand side that we have an empty dictionary. Then we're going to add two person objects to this dictionary with the corresponding keys, uh, sorry, the corresponding values one and two and then when we print the data, we're going to have two entries in our dictionary, one for each of the people. And then when we delete person one, without touching the dictionary, you can see that the value in the dictionary has changed to only contain person two. So when we're using descriptors, we need to declare them on a class like so. So note this isn't inside our init method, it is declared as a class attribute. So here we're saying that we have a class called my class and it has an attribute my attribute and we're using a descriptor called my descriptor which we're going to initialize here. So at this point, the set name method will be called and it will pass in my attribute as that name. So if you need to use it for whatever reason, um, this is where it happens. So here's a basic descriptor. It's essentially going to behave like a regular Python instance attribute. You pretty much would never use this descriptor, um, but it is a good example. So it's just a regular class in our initialization method. We're creating a weak key dictionary, which is going to store all our values for this attribute. And then in our get method here, we're taking in the instance and the owner. We're checking whether or not the instance is none. 
So we do need to do this because we could potentially try to call this attribute as a class attribute. So if we go back to the last slide, it is possible for us to say my class dot my attribute and that would call our data descriptor. So we need to do something here. So what we're going to do is just return the descriptor object itself because it's the only thing that makes sense. If it is an instance, we're just going to return whatever we have stored in our dictionary for this particular instance. Then in our set method, we're taking in the instance and the value that we're trying to set and we're just going to store the value in our dictionary at this instance's key. So moving on to a more complex example, here's our capitalized value descriptor. So this is going to be how we're going to solve our problem of capitalizing the name. So again, we're going to use a weak key dictionary to create a place to store all our values. Then in our get method, it's going to be exactly the same. Check for the class case. If so, return the descriptor itself. Otherwise, we're just going to return whatever we have stored in our dictionary. But in our set method, we're going to capitalize the value and store it in the dictionary. And then at the bottom here, you can see that we're just declaring the capitalized value as our name attribute here. And that's all we need to do for our person class. So this is going to solve our problem. So we can pass in mat with lowercase m. That's going to try to assign self.name to name in our initialization method. Python is going to realize that name is a data descriptor because it implements the set method. So it's going to call that set method passing in mat as the value and p as the instance. It's then going to capitalize this value and store it in our weak key dictionary for this particular instance. Then when we call p.name, it recognizes that name is a data, uh, sorry, a data descriptor and return mat with a capital M by calling the get method. Then when we reassign p.name equals Sam, it's going to recognize it's a data descriptor, call the set method, capitalize the value and store it on the dictionary. And then it's going to print p.name, which is going to call our get method, which is going to be, uh, which is going to call Sam from the dictionary. So descriptors have a few use cases. So in this talk, I've uh, shown you how you can implement um, any customization for multiple attributes without caring about the name. So if you know our set method, uh, sorry, our set attra and property um, solutions, you needed to pass in the name of whatever the attribute was, whereas with our descriptor, we don't really care. Django also uses uh, descriptors to implement generic foreign keys and model managers. Uh, we can use descriptors for implementing custom validations. So if you were trying to create a phone number field or something like that, you could use descriptors to do that. And we can also use descriptors to provide better error messages for our customizations. So here we have generic foreign keys in Django. So this is just the set method. Um, this is quite a novel way of storing two values on one instance attribute. So it's going to take in the instance and the value. It's going to grab the content type and the foreign key, which are things that you don't really need to worry about right now. Um, and basically, it's going to store two separate values on the instance here, but it's only taking in one value, which leads to a nicer user interface for the user of this particular library. We also can do custom validation. So here, we're implementing a non-negative integer descriptor because we'd like to have an age attribute on our person. So it's going to have the regular initialization and get methods. And then in our set, we're going to check whether or not it's an integer. If it isn't an integer, we're going to raise a type error saying that value is not of type int. And if the value is less than zero, we're going to return a value error saying that it must be a non-negative integer. Otherwise, we'll set the value fine. So at the bottom here, you can see that we're trying to assign p.age to four. This is fine. We can try to assign p.age to zero. This is fine. We try to assign p.age to mat. This isn't fine at all because it's a type error uh, because mat is a string. And if we try to assign p.age to negative one, we get a value error because although it's an integer, it's less than zero. So our last descriptor had uh, these top error messages where it would just say mat is not of type in and must be a non-negative integer. This isn't particularly useful for beginners, so we'd like to uh, prepend the error messages with the name of the attribute that we're trying to set. So we can change our non-negative integer uh, descriptor to implement the set name field here, uh, method here, and all it's going to do is store the name on the descriptor itself. And then in our set method, we're going to use f strings and prepend 
the name uh, before the error message. So that's the end of the talk. Um, all the code is online at GitHub uh, above. So before I finish up, I just want to say that although, although descriptors are quite powerful, please don't go using them everywhere because when you have beginners come to your project, you are, in, uh, you are essentially adding more magic to your program. Um, so beginners are going to come in, they're going to try to set things, and they won't know all these side effects that you've got going on under the hood. Um, so yeah, be quiet. Uh, think about descriptors before you implement them. Thank you. Um, thank you, Matt, for a great talk. Uh, now, unfortunately, we're down to one mic. So what we're going to do is we'll get questions by hand up. I'll point someone out. If you can yell out your question, and then I'll get Matt to just repeat it for the video. Uh, sorry for the technical glitches. It wouldn't be a conference without them. <laughs> So the question was, do they have any runtime performance penalty? Um, realistically, uh, that comes down to how you implement them. If you're doing things inside your descriptors that are going to be slow, then yeah, it's going to add extra, um, extra penalties on for you. Um, so if you're trying to like set cache values or something inside your descriptor or making uh, external calls, then yeah, it's going to slow down your, uh, your program. Yes. Right, so the question was, can you chain descriptors? Um, so just to clarify, do you want to add like multiple properties to one attribute? Yeah. Yeah. I guess you could. Um, I haven't uh, particularly done that, um, but I imagine that what you could probably do is implement a descriptor and then implement another one which subclasses it and then add your extra validations there. Yes. You would have to delete it off the class itself, I think. Um, we can take that one offline if you want, and we can play around with it. Yes. I can't comment on that one. Um, again, we can have a chat afterwards. Yes. That's an interesting one. Um, you, <laughs> oh, sorry. So the question was, what happens when you try to pickle an object um, that has a descriptor on it? Um, I can't comment on that. Uh, pickle is unsecure, um, so <laughs> please don't use it um, if you can avoid it. Is there any more questions? Yes, up the back. How do descriptors integrate with slots? Um, again, I haven't played around with slots uh, with descriptors yet, but it is something that um, I will look into. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me today, um, and I hope you all learned something. I'd like to thank Matt again. We're running a couple of minutes early, so if anyone uh, needs to do a room change, you've got plenty of time. And Matt, please accept this lovely mug.